Lower extremity venous insufficiency is very common, afflicting about 25% of women and 15% of men. Although people may seek medical treatment for varicose veins because of aesthetic concerns, most people suffer from symptoms such as leg heaviness, fatigue, and itching. Left untreated, many patients with significant superficial venous insufficiency will eventually suffer from chronic venous insufficiency, characterized by lower extremity swelling, eczema, pigmentation, hemorrhage, and ulceration. Duplex ultrasound evaluation is essential in determining the underlying source of reflux in a patient with varicose veins. Saphenofemoral junction incompetence with greater saphenous vein reflux is the most common underlying cause of significant varicose veins. The traditional approach to treating SFJ incompetence with GSV reflux has been surgical ligation and stripping. The drawbacks of surgery include risks associated with general anesthesia, surgical complications, increased in-hospital costs, and prolonged recovery. Also, recurrence is common following ligation and stripping of the GSV. Recently, there has been interest in less invasive alternatives. Endovenous laser treatment, EVLT, allows delivery of laser energy directly into the blood vessel lumen in order to produce endothelial and vein wall damage with subsequent fibrosis. The major steps in EVLT include Duplex ultrasound is used to mark the skin overlying the incompetent portion of the GSV starting at the SFJ. The area to be treated is prepped and draped. Percutaneous needle access of the distal aspect of the incompetent segment of the GSV is obtained under ultrasound control. An O35 guide wire is placed through the needle up the GSV into the CFV. The position of the guide wire is verified with ultrasound. A 5 French introducer sheath is placed over the wire into the CFV. Remove the wire and internal dilator once the position of the sheath is verified with ultrasound. Intraluminal position is confirmed by aspiration of non-pulsatile venous blood. Withdraw the sheath under ultrasound control until the tip of the sheath is about one centimeter distal to the SFJ. A 600 micron Diomed laser fiber is inserted into the sheath and advanced up to the first sight mark indicating that the distal tip of the laser fiber is flush with the end of the sheath. The sheath is then withdrawn to the second sight mark, exposing the distal 3 cm of the bare-tipped laser fiber. Verify that the laser fiber tip is about 1 cm distal to the SFJ with ultrasound and by checking the location of the aiming beam. Deliver adequate tumescent anesthesia, 0.2% xylocaine, under ultrasound control, intrafacially, around the GSV, from the SFJ to the point of needle access distally. In addition to the anesthetic effects, properly delivered, this fluid compresses the vein and provides a heat sink to minimize the possibility of heat-related damage to adjacent tissues. Laser energy is delivered continuously as the laser fiber is withdrawn at about 2 millimeters per second from just below the SFJ to the point where the fiber enters the GSV distally. Once the distal segment of the vein has been treated, the laser is put in standby and the sheath and fiber are removed. Complementary treatments, such as sclerotherapy and ambulatory phlebectomy, may be done to tributary varices at the time of EVLT or at follow-up. A short stretch bandage is worn for three days, and a class two stocking is worn for a week. We're going to want you to do a lot of walking over the next week, and when we're through here, I'm going to ask you to use our treadmill for about a 20-minute walk. I'd like for you to walk or treadmill or bike about one hour per day. The patient is seen between three and seven days later for follow-up. 
Duplex ultrasound criteria for successful treatment at that time include a non-compressible GSV, minimally decreased in diameter, with echogenic thickened vein walls, and no flow seen within the occluded vein lumen upon colored Doppler interrogation. The understanding of venous disease continues to improve, with tremendous strides being made over the past decade. Non-invasive technology such as duplex ultrasound allows us to precisely map out abnormal venous pathways and identify underlying sources of reflux. The appropriate management of the patient with large varicose veins will sometimes require more than just the ability to perform EVLT. You need to be able to treat, when appropriate, underlying incompetent perforators and other subsurface tributaries. Modalities that may be helpful include sclerotherapy, ultrasound-guided sclerotherapy, and ambulatory phlebectomy. Endovenous laser and other modern minimally invasive techniques provide patients alternatives to stripping and ligation for GSV reflux without many of the drawbacks associated with surgery.